Hello amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. First of all, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for returning. If you are a first time viewer, welcome here. I'd like to talk a little bit about cross-site scripting because I think that with modern web applications, it has been getting a little bit tougher to pull off, but cross-site scripting is still very much a relevant vulnerability and you can very much harm websites with it. Now, how does this happen? Let's say that I have a basic website. Websites always consist of script tags. Uh, sorry, of HTML tags, of course, not script tags. And I'll show an example of those HTML tags on screen right now. That's what a usual website would look like. You have an opening tag, a closing tag, and then some values in between. And that's basically how you'd construct most websites. Now, all fine and dandy, but let's say that I might want to add a little bit of dynamics to my website. I don't want it to be a static mess, so I want to have some moving images on there, some carousels. For that, they invented certain scripting languages, such as JavaScript. Now, for the simplicity of this video, I'm gonna say that a script always comes within a scripting tag. I know that this is not the case, but bear with me, because I wanna explain this in its simplest form. So let's say that one of these HTML tags, again, shown on screen right now, is gonna be a script tag. Well, then I can insert some scripts in between there to make things happen, like an alert pop-up, for example. That's what you see most often when we talk about cross-site scripting. But of course, that's just the very basics. Now, that's what the developer all controls all of this scripting all of the html code that's all for the developer but let's say that we have some user input now on our website like a form and as you enter text in there that gets displayed on our website in its most basic form there's nothing stopping the user from typing their own script tag in there and then the user can insert their own scripting code in there as well and that is the very basic form of cross-site scripting. Now, some very bad things can happen if cross-site scripting is allowed. For example, what we know as session tokens are sometimes used to identify specific users on a website. If I can steal somebody's session token with, with uh, cross-site scripting, then that's very much possible, then I can take over their complete account. And that has happened in the past several times over. Famous example, the self-retweeting tweet. That was also a cross-site scripting because what would happen is every time you came onto that web page, it would hit that little, there would be some JavaScript code on that web page that said, go hit that little retweet button. And since you were logged in, it would hit that button and bam, you had another retweet there. And the next person that came along and saw that tweet on your profile would automatically hit retweet as well. So there's a few famous examples of this happening. And it's very easy for a developer to make an oversight here because what I am describing is the very basic form of cross-site scripting, the HTML tag insertion, but there's much more contexts available and then there's also certain types of cross-site scripting because if I there's types where I have to send you a link and if you click that link, then in the background, I might silently be executing code to steal cookies or to, um, to execute a keylogger, for example. You can even steal specific, like if you have the, everybody knows that you can save your password in your browser's password manager. If you do that and there is cross-site scripting in there, even that can be stolen in specific ways. So uh, there's many ways to use this to the advantage of an attacker, which is why it's very wise to always check for this very, very carefully. And like I said, there's many contexts in which this can happen. There's many filters even, which can be circumvented and even very advanced things like web application firewalls um, that is designed to catch these types of attacks before they even happen. Even they can be circumvented in certain ways. 
That is why cross-site scripting is such a dangerous exploit, because it can easily even install certain crypto, well not install, run certain crypto miners on your computer. So while you're happily browsing that website, you might suddenly see your CPU spike. Well, there could be a cryptocurrency miner in the background. I'm not saying there is for all, let's be clear, there definitely isn't a, a miner working on the background of every website that kind of brings your CPU up a little bit. That's not how it works. But it, it could happen that you don't even notice a thing of, what's, of the attack that is occurring right in front of you. And I talked about the link being sent to you. I have to send you a link. You click it, the attack happens. But there's also stored cross-site scripting which means that if I come across it, if I walk across uh, this attack vector, that it automatically gets executed for me. Uh, and then I don't even have to click anything, I don't have to do anything, I just have to stumble across it. So as you can see, my friends, cross-site scripting is quite dangerous, often because the victims don't even notice it themselves. And if the website where the attack is happening doesn't have proper logging and monitoring systems in place to catch these attacks, then they won't ever really know that it's going on. So such an attack can be in a system for weeks, months, years, even if it's not properly monitored. Again, very dangerous exploit. I hope I was able to shed some light on how this occurs, why this happens. Uh, and for those of you who are much more interested in it, I also have a course about cross-site scripting as well, of course. And I also have a lot of free labs available where you can practice all you want. Um, there will also be a link in the description below to a one hour long course on my channel uh, that is totally free, where I talk about these types of things more in depth. So if, you, if I piqued your interest, Please don't let it be for bad though, we are ethical hackers here, but if I have piqued your interest and if you want to learn, there will be plenty of resources for you in the description below. Uh, who, do, who are the people that I kind of look up to when it comes to this stuff? Um, there's Albino Wax, uh, there's Brute Logic, there's Lupin, uh, those are my cross-site scripting heroes a little bit. So if you guys want to look into them a little bit more, I'll provide links for you as well. Thank you very much for watching, my friends. Check out my cool DC CyberSec merch. I freaking love it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, amazing hackers.